There's a few brand new gaming news stories we need to talk about today, starting with a notable Mega Man sale that is live right now on the eShop that fans of the series will definitely want to pay attention to. Then we also have to talk about a surprise game leak that has come to us from the Taiwanese rating board, which is notorious from listing games ahead of their official announcement that could indicate we're getting another round of this game releasing for the Switch. Then the big talking point for today's video is a very interesting investment that's just been made into Nintendo Corporation directly and a broad discussion on what, if anything, this really means for Nintendo's future. What's up, Nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunburn Nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, we got a few different stories to get through today, and we have to kick it off with a sale that is going on right now on the eShop. It has only been live for a couple days and runs until May 22nd around the classic lineup of Mega Man games. And if you are a fan of the Mega Man series at all, this is one that I would recommend you checking out as it has some of the series classics and really the best in my opinion listed up right over on nintendo's website you can see the following mega man 11 which is the most recent installment of mega man and by the way a very challenging game if you are a fan of very hardcore non-forgiving difficulty that you just have to get good enough to beat the bosses beat the levels and progress this is definitely one that i would recommend checking out as it's a throwback to the classic old mega man games but with a new more modern graphical style and presentation of course then you have mega man legacy collection 2 coming in at 50 percent off or $9.99 on the eShop, which of course features a nice group of the original OG Mega Man games. Mega Man X Legacy Collection at 50% off or $9.99 on the eShop right now. This is definitely the title that holds the most nostalgia for me personally, as I was in the heyday of my gaming on the SNES, getting into games really for the first time in a hardcore sense, and the Mega Man X 1 through 3 games stick out as some of my favorite 2D action shooters period of all time, and I would definitely recommend fans of the series or just to fans of this style of game to go back and check out those original Mega Man X 1 through 3 specifically. I know there's more that were released on the PlayStation over the course of time. 1 through 3 was the sweet spot for me on the SNES, so definitely check out those games. Then if you do find yourself a fan of those games and you want to progress further into the X series, you have Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2 at 50% off or also $9.99 on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Mega Man Zero slash ZX Legacy Collection coming in at 34% off or $19.79 on the eShop. This is one that I personally have not had a chance to play through myself so it may be worth looking at now for me definitely let me know in the comments down below whether or not you have nostalgia for the Mega Man Zero and ZX games and if you'd recommend playing through these games if you are a fan of other Mega Man games in the series as that will definitely help me make my decision and finally Mega Man Legacy Collection coming in at 33% off or $9.99 on the eShop right now with the collection of the very first original Mega Man games from the NES era and ones that in my opinion definitely still hold up to this day make sure you share with me in the comments down below whether whether or not you're planning on looking into any of these Mega Man games that are on discount right now, if you're planning on picking any of them up, and then definitely share with me your most nostalgic Mega Man memories across the entire series. And if you had to pick a few games out of the entire bunch, which ones are your all time favorites? So I do look forward to hearing from you guys on all things Mega Man and the sale in the comments down below. Now, the next story we're talking about today has to do with a unannounced Nintendo Switch game potentially leaking online ahead of its official announcement. As if you guys aren't familiar with the Taiwanese rating board, they are notorious for actually listing games that are potentially in the works to come to a console, and then they go ahead and rate it, and it's out there for public information. And the next thing you know, we know about a game we were not supposed to know about at that point in time. Now, this rating has since been pulled down, but we do typically see that happen with leaks like this. And the game we are talking about is one that is no stranger to re-releases as we are talking about Elder Scrolls Skyrim, which of course you may be saying, well, that's already on the Switch right now and you would be right. However, there is a 10th anniversary version of this game that was released late last year for the other consoles, meaning your Xbox series consoles and your PS4, PS5 and so on. And that exact version of the game is what's been rated now according to the Taiwanese rating board. And to get on the same page with all the details of exactly what's unfolded here, let's quickly hop over to VGC and read through their detailed article together. Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition has reportedly been rated for Switch. The remaster was released for other consoles in November 2021. The game is said to have been classified for release on Nintendo's console by the Taiwanese rating board, which has previously revealed a number of games prior to their official announcements. The Elder Scrolls Anniversary classification no longer appears to be viewable online, perhaps suggesting it had been removed because it was listed in error or ahead of schedule, although not before Twisted Voxel took a screenshot of it. 
Announced last August, the latest remaster of the popular RPG was released for Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PS5, PS4, and PC in November 2021 to coincide with the game's 10th anniversary. The Skyrim Anniversary Edition followed the 2013 Legendary Edition and the 2016 Special Edition. The Anniversary Edition includes everything from the Special Edition, an enhanced version of the main game, and its Dawnguard, Heartfire, and Dragonborn expansions. It also includes 500 pieces of content from the game's creation club, which includes quests, dungeons, bosses, weapons, and spells made by both Bethesda and community creators. Now, clearly Skyrim was very revolutionary when it was originally released, and Bethesda knows they stumbled onto a gold mine with that. Clearly, after all of the re-releases and enhanced versions we've seen released over the years and preservation of that game, they definitely know they have a hardcore fan base, and the modding community is rather impressive around everything they've accomplished with that game. That said, and it may come as a surprise to you guys, I was never able to get into Skyrim myself. I've given it a chance on multiple different consoles over the course of time, originally purchased it on the PS. PS4 as part of one of the remasters that came out and then I did play it again on the PS4 on the VR headset which had some very interesting motion controls and was definitely like a cool perspective shift but something that I ultimately never got that hook set in that I really wanted to progress and spend that 50 to 100 plus hours that you can easily get out of this experience I know it has a hardcore fan base just wasn't for me at the time maybe with this anniversary edition apparently coming to switch or most likely coming to switch obviously this could be an error on the Taiwanese rating boards end but it's very suspect it's most likely going to be announced soon for the Nintendo Switch, maybe even something like at that rumored upcoming summer Nintendo Direct, but I may give the game one more shot with the Joy-Con play. I know it supported that when it was originally released on the Switch, and I would love to hear from you guys in the comments down below whether or not you have nostalgia for Skyrim, if you are a big fan of the game and have purchased it multiple times over the course of the years that it's been re-released, or if you're kind of like me and you never were able to get into it. And definitely, if you are somebody who is hardcore into Skyrim, share with me your build and play style in the game and really what got you so into it and also what kind of games you enjoy in general because when I look at Skyrim I think I can get into it and then for some reason I just don't that said of course it's been a very long time since I've even booted it up at all so I may give this one another chance if we do indeed see this official announcement released soon but I want to hear from you guys and all your thoughts and opinions on the Skyrim re-release for the Nintendo Switch and the ratings board leak in the comments down below now, the last story we're talking about today has to do with a very interesting investment directly into Nintendo Corporation, and I don't think anybody was expecting to see this make the headlines today, but we are talking about Saudi Arabia essentially purchasing a 5% stake into Nintendo Corporation, and you probably will see a lot of talk and controversy pop up around this online, and I want to focus on and stick to what this really means for Nintendo's bottom line at the end of the day. They haven't commented at this point around this investment, and I'm not going to claim to be any kind of financial expert, but this is very much a business decision from the sounds of it and this is just one of many investments they've made into the gaming sector over recent years but to get all of the information out there and then to quickly wrap up what this means if anything for nintendo let's quickly hop over to nintendo everything and read through their detailed article together saudi arabia's public investment fund buys 5.01 stake in nintendo co According to a report by Bloomberg, this will make the PIF the company's fifth largest shareholder and was done for investment purposes. This is the PIF's third known acquisition in Japan listed gaming firms made this year after they previously disclosed stakes in Capcom Co. and Nexon Co. that are both greater than 5% and have a combined value of over $1 billion. The PIF has been notably active in investments in the video game industry over the last two years, as in 2021 it made acquisitions worth $1.3 billion in Activision Blizzard and $1 billion in EA, which which equates to around 3.5 and 2.6% respectively for those companies' share totals. It also invested $825 million in Take-Two, accounting for approximately 3.5% of the company's total shares. A Nintendo spokesman is said to have stated that the company heard about the investment from news reports, but would not comment on the activities of individual shareholders. So clearly there's a lot of controversy around Saudi Arabia as a whole just due to the laws that they have over in that country and that's not what we're going to discuss here. We are going to discuss exactly how this affects Nintendo and the reality is is that this is just a business as usual transaction for Saudi Arabia apparently just thinking that the gaming space is going to continue to expand. This does not change anything for Nintendo other than just give them a higher valuation of their bottom line and their revenue and it doesn't really even though they're the fifth largest investor doesn't give them necessarily power in any of Nintendo's decisions 
decisions if they were somehow the primary shareholder and Nintendo was not the majority holder anymore well then then we would be in an entirely different scenario having a completely different conversation but in case you do see any outlandish headlines out there this is just a financial decision and an investment into Nintendo Corporation directly from Saudi Arabia and it's not very different than anything else we've seen them do up to this point just that it is Nintendo this time around that received this large investment from them and I won't claim to know how these transactions spawn or go down to begin with but it's not like Nintendo's selling off a portion of their company to them it's more like Nintendo's a publicly traded company and they can invest into companies that they think are going to grow over the course of time so if you see any outlandish headlines around this story making it a much bigger deal than it really is I would just say at the end of the day it is business as usual for Nintendo and you can pretty much dismiss that and it will be interesting to see if Nintendo responds to this investment publicly at all as currently up to this point in time if you believe the spokesman at face value they found out about this through the news like the rest of us did so regardless of this big headline it's business as usual from Nintendo I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below around all the different stories we talked about today are you picking up any of the Mega Man games on sale on the eShop right now what are your thoughts on Skyrim Anniversary Edition potentially being slated for release for the Nintendo Switch console and what are your thoughts on this investment to Nintendo Corporation directly and please be very respectful to each other in the comments around this topic as clearly anytime there's something that's divisive amongst fans it can get very heated and I don't want to see that in the comment section so please be kind courteous and respectful of one another regardless of if you have different viewpoints and opinions on subjects like this but I do look forward to hearing from you guys on all the different stories we talked about today in the comments down below before you leave the video as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics go watch yesterday's video next if you haven't already where we discuss discuss the new details around Sony's outlined multi-tier subscription service and one very specific feature that I think Nintendo could benefit from implementing in Nintendo Switch Online. Also make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.